morning everyone, it's time for another book. Uh, you may notice I am in a slightly different location than normal. I tried to do this in the garage. It is currently almost 11 o'clock at night. My kids are finally asleep. Um, I was going to do this in the garage, but I walked out there and there was a giant freaking cockroach in the garage in typical Florida summer fashion. So I said, screw that. And I came in my kids room. So they are currently sleeping in my bed. So you may notice a mess. I don't care. Judge me. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sitting in that garage. Uh, anyway, so this week we are talking about Monster Hunters by T. Krulos. Um, I, I picked this up out of curiosity. Um, I was actually looking for information on uh, demonic oppression and paranormal possession. Less possession, more oppression. Um, if you don't know the difference, oppression, as he writes in this book, is kind of like, you know, spirits making you feel bad and uh, possession is actually being someone actually taking over your body and your consciousness, kind of. Um, so I wasn't sure how much information this would have, but it seemed like an interesting premise. Um, the average Goodreads rating, and my cards are all out of order, um, average Goodreads rating was 3.5. I gave it four stars. So pretty much T. Krulos is a journalist and he went on a, um, kind of like a hunt across the country investigating different paranormal theories and the people who actually go and study these theories and look for evidence of like UFOs and Bigfoot and um you know ghost invest you know paranormal investigators ghost hunters um you know and he rather than taking kind of like a um you know an up here view just writing kind of academically about the whole thing he actually gets in there on the investigations with the people um, which I thought was really kind of cool, um, especially reading about some of the stuff, specifically cryptozoology, which is kind of like your Bigfooters, um, skunk apes, and, you know, all those other weird hominid creatures. Um, you know, he would camp out overnight. And, you know, for me, I never choose to go camping. Um, I hated going out to the field when I was in the army, so... You know, and you saw how I reacted just to seeing a giant cockroach in the garage. Um, so I give him a lot of props for, you know, actually getting out in the field and, you know, sleeping in tents, you know, willingly and stuff like that. Um, you know, my personal history with paranormal stuff, um, you know, I've always been kind of interested in weird, the funky, you know, big X-Files nerd growing up. Um, you know, kind of like the barometer um, for paranormal stuff is... Are you more like Mulder or Scully? I was definitely more on the Mulder side of the house. I like Scully because she, she was a doctor and I wanted to be a doctor. Um, but I was definitely more of a Mulder character. Um, so I'm, you know, growing up I was always like, UFOs, yes, definitely they exist. Aliens, definitely they exist. Um, you know, I kind of moved away from UFOs as I got older and went more towards like ghosts and spirits and stuff. Um, but I still find it all really fascinating. Um, UFOs, I don't know about UFOs specifically, but, uh, you know, I think the universe is a little too big for us to be, for, you know, humans on earth to be the only creatures in the entire universe. You know, I think it's a little too big, uh, for us to be alone. So definitely I think there's something out there. Um, from a writing standpoint, I did really enjoy this book. Like I said, I gave it four stars. Um, and he writes kind of like from a skeptic's point of view. He, but it's a respectful skeptic, if you know what I mean. Let me explain. Um, you know how you come across uh, people who like don't believe any of it and they're just like, ghosts don't exist, you're stupid. This is less of that. It's more, well, I don't know what's out there, but I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to look into it. Um, you know, and especially, like I mentioned in my uh, March for Science uh, video when I went through my favorite science books, um, Mary Roach had written a book called Spook, 
and I couldn't get through it because I was so put off by her tone of, I don't believe in any of this. I don't think any of this is real. Um, you know, it was very off-putting. But uh, Mr. Krulos does a really, really good job of being very respectful and, hey, this is your experience. Um, you know, we went on this paranormal investigation, but there were no EVPs. There were, you know, sorry, spoiler alert, there were no EVPs. Um, you know, there was none of this, none of that, da da da. You know, he's very respectful and he's not like, guys, you're stupid. Um, even when he's talking about at the UFO conference, um, sorry, Congress, about like the experiencer sessions and stuff like that, he, um, you know, he doesn't, he's very respectful about the entire thing. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And I, you know, as a believer in some of the stuff, at least, I, I definitely appreciated that. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting in his book was he, you know, he talks to a couple different skeptics about different things. And one of the things that comes up is scientific versus scientifical. You know, you see the show Ghost Hunters, uh, Ghost Adventures. I'm personally a big fan of Ghost Adventures myself. Um, but a lot of these, uh, paranormal shows on TV now, you know, they purport to be scientific, but... Um, one of the skeptics he talks to was like, no, that's more scientific. Cole, where you look scientific, you sound scientific, but you're not really. And one of the things that I'll kind of get into later a, a little bit is like, well, how scientific can you really get with, especially like ghost hunting and, you know, paranormal investigation, you know, like how scientific can you get for something that, isn't necessarily going to be reproducible. But anyway, we'll get into that. Um, one of the things I thought was really cool, he includes a discussion in several chapters about preying on emotionally vulnerable people. And I, without saying it so much, kind of like the ethics of the paranormal investigation, um, you know, specifically talking about mediums and... Um, you know, paranormal investigations, you know, should you charge to do investigations? If you're a medium, should you really charge for that sort of thing? Um, you know, and the main group that he investigates with, uh, paranormal investigators in Milwaukee, they say no, but then he talks to another lady, a medium, who says, look, I quit my job. This is all I do now because there is such a demand. Um, you know, I still have to pay my mortgage. I still have to pay my bills. This is still my time that I'm giving. So he did a really good job of balancing the two sides. Like, well, I mean, if this is all you're doing, this is literally your day job, you know, should you be paid for that? You know, so the ethics on it are a little murky, but I, he did a really good job balancing it and I can see both sides of the equation there. Um... And then he also, in terms of the preying on emotional people, he includes a discussion of Reverend Larson, who is a big, I guess in a way, a faith healer. You know, like, be gone, demon. Um, you know, and he he went to one of his sessions and, you know, watched a bunch of his YouTube videos, went to one of his sessions, and, you know, really talked about, you know, how much is he really making off of this and you know, looking for those people who are going to give him the show that he's trying to put out there. Um, you know, and he describes at the end of it, like, he, like, bounded out of the room when the guy turned his back. He's like, I, I probably would have done the same thing. Um, you know, I, and again, this comes down to good on you for actually going through with that. I don't know if I could have handled that like that kind of charged atmosphere um da -da -da. and related to reverend larson but also discussed it, he mentions a couple times online courses for exorcism like learning how to be an exorcist i mean i guess there's online courses for anything nowadays um but i thought that was kind of interesting and he even included the prices and um i think the one like the Exorcist level training through Reverend Larson's website was like $2,500 or something. It's like, 
I guess if that's what you want to do, it's worth it, but I think I would trust a priest more. You know, just saying. Um, and then on my last, my ghost hunting card, cue card, um, talking about ghost hunters versus uh, ghost adventures. I thought it was kind of interesting um, because a lot of the paranormal investigators he talks to reference really coming into it because of ghost hunters. And... You know, he does give some mention to Ghost Adventures, um, specifically when they go to investigate Bobby Mackey's music world. And I have seen that episode. I've seen, like, all the Ghost Adventures episodes. And he also talks about the... Ghost Adventures Aftershocks did not have, I think, necessarily a direct role in breaking up uh, some of the relationships in the investigative group he was with. But it, it does kind of tangentially play into it. Um, but he also, T. Krulos talks to Jack Ashcraft, which I thought was kind of interesting because I thought I remembered uh, Father Ashcraft being on Ghost Adventures at one point. But he actually, uh, uh, Father Ashcraft makes a distinction kind of with ghost adventures not by name but like with their tactics of provoking spirits um that it's in a way kind of um you know you're chasing demons but you're also kind of not idolizing them but um i wish i had written down the page um You're seeking, you're seeking demons and you're really, you know, it's not right, essentially. It's not right. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of curious, I don't know, um, if you continue to watch Ghost Adventures, you see in later seasons, like, Zack especially really mellows out. And in one episode, um, he actually says, like, we've learned, like, you shouldn't provoke these spirits. And we're going to try to be more respectful. So over the course of the series, you do see him kind of mellow out and kind of coming to a new respect for um, what they're doing. Um, so my questions on this part of the book, specifically, like, you know, I'm kind of curious, and T. Krulos actually follows me on Twitter. Thanks for following me. Um, you know, Mr. Krulos, if you want to answer this, um, you know, did it come up in your conversations with Father Ashcraft that he was on Ghost Adventures, and, like, was there, like, a conflict there in doing that? Um, and also, like, did you, when you were looking at that particular show, like, did you see kind of like that transformation specifically in Zach that he kind of mellowed out and he, like, he still sometimes provokes, but not, not as much, not, not really anymore. Um, you know, but that, those were just my questions that came up on that particular section. So, you know, Mr. Krulos, hopefully you watch this. And if you do, thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, feel free to hit me up in the comments. You know, keep this conversation going and let me know, you know, what you, uh, you know, answer my questions, please. Um, so that's that. Um, I'm just going to go through the next couple things really, really quickly. And I know I'm speaking really, really fast, possibly more quickly than I normally do. Um, cryptozoology. So, cryptozoology, to those who don't know, this is kind of like your Bigfoot or your skunk ape people, um, stuff like that. Um, for me, this is kind of like where I, I lost a star on the book just because, like, I was never really interested in cryptozoology. So, reading through those chapters, it was interesting to me, but, like, he mentions the Jersey Devil, and I'm from Philly, and I had never heard of the Jersey Devil. My husband had to explain it to me one day. Um, you know, but it's like, I never had an interest in it. It's kind of like NASCAR. I know it's there, but I, I just don't care. You know, the only difference being I know NASCAR exists and, you know, I don't know that Bigfoot exists. Um, but it's, I don't know. It was interesting, but those parts of the books didn't really appeal to me 
that much. Um, what I didn't realize is how territorial uh, cryptozoologists are, apparently. Um, especially Bigfooters, you know, they don't want to share their territory and they don't want to share their data, which when you come down to it, guys, we're trying to make paranormal studies, you know, more scientific and less scientific goal. Like, you got to share your data or else it's not going to be reproducible and we're never going to be a scientific field. Um, you know, glossing through UFOs also, you know, I mentioned like growing up, I definitely believed in UFOs. I still believe that, you know, we're not alone in the universe. Um, but, you know, I've, I've kind of moved on from UFOs now. Um, I did not know there was a UFO Congress. That's kind of cool. Um, and these experiencer sessions, I mean, I guess cognitively I knew somewhere in my mind that these people who think they've been abducted, um, you know, they probably get together and, you know, swap probe stories, but I didn't know it was like an actual thing. So, you know, and he's very respectful that, you know, he didn't report in detail on that and you know he really you know for lack of a better phrase kept it clean um but that that was a part that kind of like you know like that's weird so that that was interesting um so final thoughts i know this has been kind of like more of a theoretical discussion of things and less discussing the book and more discussing the material inside of it um, I did really enjoy the book. Um, like I said, I gave it four stars. Average Goodreads rating is 3.5. Um, it does cover a lot of stuff. Um, and it does cover a lot of his experiences. And spoiler alert, there are a lot of, like, you know, no findings, no findings, no findings. But when there are findings, I, for lack of a better phrase, he, he's cool enough to describe what happens really well. And he doesn't gloss it over and be like, oh, it was probably just this. You know, um, you know, he does say, like, I don't know what it was, but it was weird. You know, which, especially when you're writing a book from a skeptical point of view, um, you know, I personally appreciate it as a believer. So... Um, I think at the end of the day, everyone kind of needs something to believe in. And that's kind of like the punchline of this book. Everyone needs something to believe in, you know, whether you fervently believe in atheism or you fervently, um, you know, you're out there in the marshes searching for skunk apes or whatever. Um, you know, everybody needs something. Um, you know, and looking at where does the paranormal community go, you know, to move from that scientific to scientific and how do you really make it more reputable as a scientific field? How do you really get skeptics on board? Um, I think part of the problem is reproducibility. I mean, especially when you talk about um, ghost hunting, you know, we already don't know a whole lot, but like, how do you achieve reproducibility with spirits? You know, it's, it's one of those things like, I don't know that we'll ever 100% have answers until maybe the day we die and then it'll be too late to, to matter. Um, but it, to some extent it is going to require a degree of belief um, you know that kind of the truth is out there type thing um, you know you just gotta keep searching for it and keep holding on to that little glimmer of hope that you know this weekend when I go out I'm gonna find something you know this weekend when I go ghost hunting I'm gonna get that EVP you know whatever um, you know and it just takes that little just that little little something to hang your hat on. Um, so my question, you know, I already gave Tikrulos enough questions in this video. Um, everybody else, um, what kind of evidence would be enough for you? Um, and you can pick any topic you want. It can be UFOs, it can be Bigfoot, it can be ghosts, it can be, you know, whatever. What level of evidence is enough for you. You know, I've been on a couple of ghost hunts myself. 
um, bad Jew that I am, I'm not supposed to, um, uh, you know, and I've seen, you know, a bunch of people say, you know, I won't believe until someone, until a ghost, like, punches me in the face, um, you know, feel free to touch me, you know, that's the only way I'm going to believe, um, so, you know, I know some people, you know, they have to have literally that in-your-face experience, but what degree of evidence is your personal threshold? Like, you know, is a really good picture of Bigfoot enough? Is, you know, do you have to like go out on one of these uh, expeditions and see it with your own eyes? Do you need to see a carcass? Like, what, what degree of evidence do you need in order to believe? Um, so that's the question I'm gonna leave you with. It is now 11 o'clock. I gotta get to bed before my kids notice me missing. Um, but if you read the book, you know, let me know what you think. If you have any, you know, burning thoughts you just have to share on any of the topics I discuss, feel free to, you know, share them below. Um, you know, T. Krulos, thank you. You know, great job on this book. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for following me on Twitter. Guys, if you want to follow me on Twitter, my handle is at what's Lex reading, uh, W H A T S L E X reading. Um, and then I'm on Instagram at Alex underscore with underscore uh, underscore why I literally just joined. Um, so I'm still getting used to this whole thing. Um, you know, tell me what you thought about the book. Tell me what you think about these uh, these topics. If you like this video, you want to see more, hit like, hit, hit subscribe so you get notifications. And until next time, let me know when you're, what you're reading. I don't know what I'm going to read next. I have a stack of books and um, I need to pick my next one. So it'll be a surprise to me as much as it is to you. But anyway, you guys have a great night. Be safe and I will see you all soon.